good. Um, as you know, I'm, I, I really love long meetings. So uh, this long meeting will last uh, as long as it takes. Um, we're gonna look at this work plan document just for a second uh, to see where we are and what we need to be doing. Uh, I have it on my other computer, so I'm, um, we are um, <clears throat> establishing recommendations, actions based on findings from the teacher retention research, which encompasses both our teacher retention survey and the uh, larger survey, uh, the newest one. And it says it's in progress. It'll be in progress for the entire rest of the school year, I guess, or till August. And then the Mary Levy report, uh, John Paul, are you gonna give us an update on what's going on with that? Okay, go for it. Um, so uh, I'm actually pleased to see, so we're, we're moving forward with the process of doing a, an updated um, uh, report from Mary Levy. Um, we're in contact with her and we're moving through the procurement process, which can take a little bit of time. Um, so we're hopeful that we'll be able to get a report from Mary um, updating us um, by July um, so that we can discuss it at the July public meeting. Okay, and the, um, just to refresh everyone's memory, the Mary Levy report will be on 2019-2020 uh, teacher attrition slash retention. Correct. Not, it won't, it'll have nothing to do with this year. Although I did hear from my source, because I have so many sources, I heard from my source that the figures from 2019-2020 were not that much different than they were in 2018, 2019. It wasn't dramatic, even though it was during the six months or the three months or four months of COVID at the end. And, um, oh, I know what I wanted to ask you, John Paul, which has to do with this. <clears throat> Who do we get a report from about the teachers that have decided not to come back to school and have submitted that paperwork that they have to do? This year, one more time. This year, teachers have to turn in. I, I always thought it was like the first of April, but it might have been in March to turn in whether or not they were deciding on coming, not coming back the next year. We have no authority whatsoever. But who gets the report? The LEA would get that. So DCPS might have that for their teachers. Um, and, and just to answer Ebony Rose's question, um, it's in the email that Caitlin sent. Um, is the agenda. So we're not in a document quite yet. Um, but yeah, so that would be an LEA level to report, um, right? Because that's that's only DCPS that has that. Um, oh, that, that asked for that? Uh, how do we well, get I, it? From, I think we could, but I don't know, see why we would want it or need it. How do we why? get it from uh, DCPS? For what? To find out how many teachers have, just to see how many teachers have decided not to come back. We can ask them. Okay. We're gonna okay. ask the, the chancellor. Okay, should, who should do that, Zach? Yeah, probably, on, I think they're gonna have a check-in meeting sometime soon, so he can ask Ben. Okay, okay, great. I'll put it on, I'll, we'll put it in the notes and then I'll remember to have it on our, our list to talk with the chancellor about. Great, and then the next thing that we wanna talk about <clears throat> is the impact survey from American University. Everybody's familiar with that, right? Mm -hmm. with, with this unknown survey that has been- Sorry, I have the agenda. I see Caitlin's email saying she's gonna send it shortly, but then I see Emily's response saying she's gonna be 10 minutes late. And oh, I don't new, That was on a new email, hold on, let me just forward it to you. It was four <laughs> o'clock, four o'clock, Ebony Rose. I was, I was too busy messing around with Kansas and Nebraska and I got nothing. That's understandable, <laughs> don't worry about it. All right, but all it says is, Discussion on American University's impact survey or study. So that's, um, we, we need to, I mean, uh, we're gonna, there's gonna be a letter sent out. You've already received a copy of the letter that will be sent either today or tomorrow, right, John Paul? Um, I don't know. Um, that's, so Zachary, when we talked in the leadership meeting today, um, we decided um, to postpone the, the um, letter and get more information from WTU. 
And the information that Jessica and Ebony Rose had, had um, provided was really helpful, I think, in terms of what was, um, you know, what was going on and, and um, oh, good. what information could be asked for. So I thought it was very, very helpful. Um, and I, I noticed Ebony Rose has her hand up, Fraser. I don't know if you can see those. Yeah, I saw her hand. Okay. I, I mean, I can see her. I don't, she doesn't have, the, I didn't see that. I, I saw her hand. Um, yeah, we, I mean, I, um, the last email I saw, because it was a bunch, I, it's a lot of emails and not a lot of time, um, was uh, what John Paul just shared, is that they're going to get more information. I, I um, Emily called me this morning and I told her the same thing I put in the email, but then I was like, oh, I should probably uh, explain to everyone because it sounds like that Liz wrote a letter beforehand saying she was concerned and it wasn't addressed and Terrence and uh, Jackie have the same concerns but this may or may not be I can totally appreciate um, not being in a place with DCPS where we can always give them the benefit of the doubt uh, I also want to make sure that we create a space where we can get information as needed and we're making the right ask because I really think this might just be premature. Uh, and Jessica, since she works at AU and knows the person that's running the thing, can actually confirm for us very easily if this research is finished. It's actually super not uncommon at all for, because like if you think about it, DCPS doesn't own the research. AU owns the research. They have someone else paying for it. So whoever's paying for it, if it's not done and if it's a certain timeline, which we should know the timeline anyway, like that, that actually shouldn't be a question. We should understand what the timeline of delivery is. But if they need to go back and ask for something like a no cost extension, they can't, that's not something they can just say to you. Like that's something they're in conversation about. And so it's not always nefarious. I'm not saying we shouldn't keep a lookout, but I think having Jessica kind of find out what's done and what's not done is makes sense. No, that's good. Now, I also think that um, the timing right now with the fact that uh, Liz's wake is tomorrow and the funeral's on Wednesday, that I think we should give, um, we don't, we don't want to um, look like we're using Liz as a reason for doing something that we're going to need, but because Liz is gone, hopefully the, the leadership will be will be going in the same direction as Liz was, and I'm sure they will. But I think we should give it, um, especially what what we've said just now about research and about finality of research may not being final yet that we need to um, find out more information before we put ourselves out there when we, we don't need to make an enemy if we don't have to make an enemy. Or a, the enemy's the wrong word, a um, antagonist. I'll use that as my English teacher. Is that, Emily, does that sound right? I missed most of the conversation, but I think I know what was said. Um, yeah, I just looked, Jessica shared with everybody what she found out. So I don't know if, if folks have had a chance to see that um, email, but basically the um, research authority, the authority to share the research does sit with DCPS, um, but that the, as of October, the research wasn't finished, I think is what I understand. I have to go back and look at that. I think um, where Zachary and I landed was we're waiting to touch base again with um, Terrence and Jackie. Jackie's the new president. Right. I'm not sure. Um, just to see how the meeting went with the chancellor today and to see if they got clarity. Because, you know, after speaking actually with Ebony Rose and Jessica, it sort of became more uh, clear to me that, that that made more sense, sense. you know, yeah, just, just to wait. To wait. Um, I don't, I yeah. Don't think, yeah, I don't think we should be waiting ad infinitum, but I think we should yeah. be strategic in our wait. 
So I'm yeah. looking at Jessica's email. And so it sounds like they had preliminary findings. They shared some preliminary findings with DCPS in October. It wasn't, and that as of right now, she says, it's not complete. So it sounds like she says, it's, so it sounds like the research is not yet complete at this point, but that per the research agreement, and that's what I was talking about between DCPS and AU, the final decision about releasing the report and the data will rest with DCPS, as Emily said. Um, yeah, so we, well, I think what we would want to know is not like, yes, how the meeting went, just yes, how the meeting went, but we would also want WTU to know and have a shared expectation around like what the timeline is. That way they're not feeling like, oh my goodness, we haven't gotten something yet. And there's the, like, we can we can have a shared expectation that's realistic. Yeah. Um, that, that seems to be a uh, part of the problem. Um, and it's actually something easy to remedy because there's a research agreement. There's a written contract, right? Like they, they, they're gonna have deliver deliverables. And so that's what they should be asking for. It's like, what are the expectations around like this being complete? And like, when when do you plan to have the fuller convening and that type of thing? Um, not hearing through the grapevine that somebody had a meeting that they weren't in, um, which sucks too, but like- It's yeah. real. I think real. that, yeah. And I think the fear is that, you know, this that suddenly a report is going to appear from DCPS that kind That's of- That's how you know, very, you have a timeline. Like yeah. you can say, all right, like I know that the research should be complete now and you can work to like, that way you don't have to be scared and looking over your shoulder every two seconds. Right. That's a right. real fear. Like I just, I just think that an okay. easy way to start to build trust is to be on the same page around what the timeline is. I, I don't think it's an imagined fear is what I'm I don't know. I don't know if y'all play poker, but there's a whole card in this. And I think we want to keep the whole card. I don't actually know what that means. Sorry. I, I do play poker, but I don't I know. I know what card I have that you can't see. Uh huh. And I don't want you to see it until I show it. And mm -hmm. I think we should be sitting on our whole card until we find out more about what's going on with the time timeline. And I mean, if we assume that they're, they have to share, the, if they don't share the information after they get it, and and then, then that's that's when we start acting proactively. But right. we shouldn't be we shouldn't be acting until. Well, I'll I'll tell you why there was concern for, on Liz's part and the you know her colleagues at the WTU is because apparently, you know, if you and I can share this actually in the chat in a minute. You know, there is a press release from AU that kind of outlines, I guess, what was agreed upon between DCPS and the researchers. And it, it specifies that there will be a point at which um, AU researchers will cooperate with DCPS and that DCPS is supposed to convene key stakeholders, you know, like, and including a WTU rep and the teachers who were interviewed and principals. So apparently there was a, a convening and WTU was not included, nor were the key stakeholders. The question I wanna ask after this meeting is, was that just a preliminary convening and there's going to be another one that, you know, where DCPS uh, follows through on that agreement or was that the convening? And I think that was, that's what Liz's letter to council was about was the assumption that it was that convening and that they were just left out. So that's what, that's a specific point we will be asking about. But when if you say we, when you say we will be, you mean with the chancellor? No, I think when, when Zach and I do get a chance to speak with Terrence and Jackie again. Oh, okay. When is your next meeting with the chancellor? We don't have one on the calendar, but we are trying to get one. But it, we were trying to get one before this. So it wasn't like specific to this. But as you know, I don't know if you guys talked about this. Do you, is your feeling that it would be better to just talk with him rather than have a letter or talk with him first? Or I don't know. I mean, that's another way of approaching it. 
that's my feeling. I mean, I feel like so honestly, um, and I I'm kind of just out of gas for today as far as like I'm I'm not great at like always um I apologize if I don't deliver this delicately because I'm I'm kind of just I'm exhausted. I came from the pet meeting before this and it was a um struggle. So um honestly, I I I do appreciate the concern. I think it's a real concern. I struggle with the way this is being framed and handled because just because they have an assumption that something is wrong doesn't mean we should necessarily take a posture that this is wrong. And I think the the posture of sending a letter, it formalizes and makes it seem like um, it's almost like tattling. Like when I was a kid, my mom would make stuff, make us work stuff out between ourselves. And as a board, if we want to continue to, if we, if we say, see, especially like you and Zach, who are supposed to be like leadership, if you all see yourselves on equal footing with people like the chancellor and others, like you have to build a relationship. Yeah. And so it has, it can't be that like, we're going to come in and be like, well, the WTU say you did the wrong thing. Explain yourself. Like that's, that's not it. Like there, there should be a, a, I can both understand as somebody who uh, has been on the opposite side of things with DCPS. I, I feel like we've been in an abusive relationship for a long time now. And yeah. I still love DCPS and I acknowledge that sometimes DCPS hits us. So there's that. But I also think as, as far as like the long-term work of the board, it's important to be able to say sometimes we just need to have a conversation about this. And I think there's something that could be cleared up be a conversation and just saying like, hey, like, um, and maybe we're not in that place yet, but hey, like, you know, we should really be saying like, we should, we wanna have a shared expectation of the timeline because it, it intersects with the work we wanna do. Um, those things, that's how you establish trust and build trust. I feel like sending a letter, I don't know if I completely feel comfortable with that approach. I would prefer it be a conversation. I also think that it uh, it allows um, it allows it allows us to be even because it is like if we send a letter kind of on behalf backing up the WTU because they come to us us as an aggrieved party when they may or may not for real be aggrieved then like we take a side to something that's not real that might not even be an issue that doesn't make sense right. Um, and so like, I do, I do feel a need for clarity. I do feel a need for transparency. I think to avoid further confusion and to eliminate um, very real and um, earned uh, fears around like not being included, just like having some insight into like, what is that timeline is really the way to go. And just kind of reaching out and saying like, hey, like, and not just to WTU, but starting a more open line of communication with the chancellor is important. Um, that's that's kind of how that works. So, I mean, I, I texted him earlier today about something. I'm gonna reach out to him again. Um, but like, we should be able to have a convert as education leaders, we should be able to have conversations with other education leaders. And that venue doesn't always have to be a formal meeting or a formal letter. Yeah. Nope, that makes total sense. Um, so we will follow up with both um, DCPS and WTU to see what we can, if we can understand more. Can I make yeah. a suggestion? Yeah, of course. <laughs> um, Please. Could we have somebody from DCPS come at, to our business meeting? To talk about yeah. this? Just to ask them about the timeline, not to be not to be negative or positive about it, because it's very, you know, whatever the results of the impact study are, uh, is going to impact the the future of education in the city. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, it's it's hard for <laughs> it's hard for DCPS who which who created impact you know it's a, it's it's their baby all right so somebody's gonna either say your baby looks really good or boy that's an ugly baby <laughs> and, and uh so i think that um 
if we could get somebody, John Paul, I don't, is that, so would that be possible? We can. I mean, we could certainly ask them to come, right? But two things that I, that I would know. One, I doubt very much they would come until a final report is done, right? They just, they just won't do that. Number two, it's not something that's in our authorities, right? It is, that is a local district matter. And if I was them, I would not come because there's no reason for the state board to be involved in a teacher evaluation system within a single LEA. But what I was, the reason I was saying that is that because of what we found out in both of the surveys that we had in the yeah. last few years, that the impact was one of the major reasons why teachers left the system. Mm -hmm. And that should be our bargaining chip about just wanting to have someone let us know the timeline, not talking about results. You know, but again, like we, our job in doing the research is to find out the reasons and tell the LEAs, these are the reasons. And then that's when our authority kind of ends. Like we, we have said and proven that this is, this is what teachers are saying is the issue. And DCPS response has been, I'm, we're going to go to AU and we're going to research this and we're going to, we're going to make some changes. We're, we're going to look at recommendations. We're going to do all these things. So, I mean, I think there's, there's an expectation there that there is going to be some changes to this, but we don't have anything to do with it. Okay. So I, I, I appreciate that. You know what I mean? Like, I, yeah, I just yeah, feel yeah. like it's, it's not putting us in a good position of, of who, for who we are. No, and we don't want to be, and Ebony Rose is, is we don't want to be like an advocate for the union uh, for, a, for something that is unknown, all right? If we're talking about <clears throat> the steps at Dorothy Height that are a danger to anyone climbing the steps at Dorothy Height, then that's something that I'll be talking about tonight at the ANC meeting or whatever. That's real. But this isn't real yet. We don't know, we don't know what we're talking about as far as right. And that's why I think Emily's um, suggestion is probably right. So to either you know wait until we have the meeting with, to learn more information from WTU about how their meeting went today, and then figure out what the next step is. Whether that's you know an informal ask and say, hey, you know our members are following this, and like just know that we're following it too, and we know that. Things are working and things, but if you can just give us an idea of what's kind of where we are, it will help, right? Yeah. Something like that. I think that's probably much more likely than doing a formal type thing. So what is the holdup about getting a meeting with the chancellor or his representative? It's just, it's not a, it's, it's just a matter of scheduling, right? Yeah. We just haven't, um, we're, we're going to start meeting with him quarterly and that's we just right. haven't been able to get on the, on the calendar yet. When was the last time y'all met? Uh, it was a couple of months ago, maybe uh, March. So it, right before he came to our meeting. So yeah, yeah, I, I think, think it was, was March. So it was I mean, it hasn't been that long. Oh, okay, okay. All right. Well, I think that um, do we do we have anything else we want to talk about as far as the um, as far as that is concerned? Uh, the the impact study. I don't think so I think this has been really helpful, this process. It's been a process. You know, I think even writing the letter was really helpful to me to just sort of see what the issues are. Um, and then t speaking with each of you has been really helpful in sort of thinking about what our role should be. So I think I think we're clear now on sort of the, the best way forward. So right. we'll just right. we'll just report back. <laughs> And that's what, and look, that's what this committee is all about. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Clarity. We're just clarifying. Everything. Oh, yeah. Okay, good. Now, um, through the obscurity. To the clarity. Now I'm going to go go to uh, Alistair. You got the mic. What am I, what did you want me to talk about, Fraser? You're going to talk about literacy. Um, well, it's, uh, it's good to know that we've got, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna pace because uh, I'm now calling from my phone. Um, it's good to know that we have uh, some folks coming in to talk with us at our next working session. I think it would be great to ask some questions about what we're actually doing right now and thinking about teacher preparation and then teacher professional development, um, particularly around literacy. 
it seemed to me that from our from our public session, which which you know I found very exciting and, and interesting. I agree. That was one of the main interventions that they were making, right? Um, to invest in in a program like Letters, um, which uh, seems to be the gold standard for literacy teacher uh, professional development. And so, to me, that seems like I'm I'm curious what folks are what folks think about. Uh, what other uh, takeaways you had from from that panel? Um, I can I can tell you what I had. One of the main main <laughs> takeaways for me that there's there's plenty more opportunity for uh, professional development. The thing that the thing that that bothered me the most was the fact that it seemed as though once a child reaches the fourth grade unless they're literate in the fourth grade, there's no help until they graduate from high school. And um, I I'm, know I'm, that's, that, that's an exaggeration, but they really did talk about the fact that secondary students were sort of out there on their own. And I know as, a, as someone who's taught thousands of secondary students that who, and many of them who were not at grade level reading uh, at all, um, they, they they were. It was really a hit and miss process. Depending on what class. Do you see those class. as mutually exclusive issues, though, Fraser? Say again. Do you see those as mutually exclusive? I see those as perfectly complementary to work I on. I agree. I agree okay. completely. It's just that there isn't, you know, when they no one they they said, well, we don't have those programs. They had these great programs in the in the pre K to. For fourth grade, I believe, and then there were, and when I brought that up, there was no answer for anything after that. I'm not saying they aren't out there. I'm just saying they didn't have any examples. Sure, there's um, there's plenty that we can be doing, right? Um, and and I think the problem that that people are honing in on in those states is that if you're not reading by third or fourth grade. For the rest of your career where you're expected to read in order to learn that becomes much more difficult right um and so i i i, I would prioritize making sure that kids are reading by third or fourth grade i um, agree completely okay I, I don't disagree at all i mean i agree completely with that i know that the students left my wife's class a head start class and they were already at second grade reading level when they left the head start class but it depended on the teacher. But what I'm saying is that when I got students in the 12th grade who were reading at a fifth grade level, all right, which would not help them in the 12th grade or the 11th grade or the 10th grade or the 9th grade, yeah. um, there weren't any programs set up to help them. Now, the way I tried to deal yeah. with it was we read all the time. And so practice, practice, practice. That was what, I, that's all you had to do. And their levels raised three or four grade levels in one year, but they were still graduating from high school, reading at a ninth grade level or something like that. Emily, you were saying something? Oh, I think I was just humming and agreeing. And I guess, you know, it just built or, um, yeah, piggybacking on what Fraser said, I'd be interested to see if there are states that have been very deliberate about coming at this from both ends. You know, so it seems like all three of those states have really prioritized, rightfully so, you know, K pre K or K through third. But I wonder if there are states that have also thought about, you know, the students that have already gone through the system as Fraser has raised, you know, and I bet, yeah. you know, so it just seems like something, I agree, it's really important as well. We don't want to forsake the kids who have already gone through the system, right? Um, and then the other thing, um, oh, because you had asked, you know, what stood out to us. I think I really um, ended up thinking a lot about the, the teacher prep programs and how they mentioned that those were the 
the places where they they met the most resistance, which isn't surprising to me, but it does make me think about how do you go about engaging, you know, and earning buy-in from that very important um, part of the equation, right? And that's that's a really I think there's a really important distinction between the teacher preparation side of the work and then the teacher professional development yeah. side yeah. of the work. And at least in, in DC right now, our, our one reading professional development program, the DC Reading Clinic has a very long wait list of teachers who want to sign up, but there's not enough space for, right? And so I think, and this is the, I think the, the question that, we may want to think about as a committee, which is, you know, as we think about what we can advocate for within this realm, right? Is it as broad as, you know, prioritize teacher preparation and teacher professional development in our plan? Or is it as specific as, you know, here is how Aussie and DCPS and or the public charter schools um, should go about actually implementing it in detail. Um, the, the, and I think to me, John Paul, that, that, that to me would be a really helpful thing for, for, for uh, to hear your feedback on as well. Um, kind of what level of analysis are we best suited to be chiming in about? I think it's a fair point. I mean, I think, um, and there's two things that I would kind of consider. I mean, so the, the EPP standards that are coming to us um, that we talked about a little bit beforehand and Caitlin shared out earlier um, this afternoon. Um, so those standards are gonna come to us for approval, right? And in general, they cover education um, uh, prep programs in DC or schools that have at least 50% of their students come to DC to teach, right? So, but, so they don't cover, you know, the, the whole gamut of, of teachers that are coming to DC, but they do cover enough that it, it's a good way for us to start this conversation in terms of what are we asking our colleges and universities to make sure that they focus on for teachers that are in being trained in DC, right? And I think that's a good first step in this type of model. And I think the second thing to think about is, you know, Aussie needs us to vote in favor of this in order to make it happen, right? So we have some bargaining power here because they need us to do something. So we can also say, great, we will approve this if you do X, Y, Z. If you say, if you, if you, you know, will create a guidelines or something, a program that will target literacy. And this is the type of program that we want to see before we would approve this. Oh, puppy. Um, and so. John, John Paul, I, 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 um, I feel very strongly about that, as you can imagine. <laughs> how, how do we make sure that we are doing that in the most, I, I'm thinking a lot about what Ebony Rose has been saying about building trust and having conversations across the aisle and not it doesn't have to be antagonistic, right? I think we, right. we do agree on a lot of these. Yeah, and, these I, points, and I, think, so. I think one of the things to remember is, is that you never wanna have your, the top level people getting in an argument, right? So you all are, should never have those conversations with individual people, that looked like it hurt, um, like individual people with the chancellor or with this, the superintendent or whatever, um, where you're like having to get into like a finger pointing or a, you know, you need to do this or those types of things. That's my job. I do that with the staff and I talk with Aussie staff and say, okay, so here's the deal. Like we will do this project A for you, but you got to do this B thing for us and we want to see it. And this is what we want to see. And then there's some yelling at me and then I've come back and we've, we work it out. And then I bring some of the details back to the board and the, like the negotiation -y parts. So my suggestion would be that, that I don't know, I don't remember how much uh, longer on time we have in this, in this group, but one of the things that we should do is, is come up with sort of like a menu of options of things that we think are acceptable that would move the needle on this, right? So either 
And, and those are not necessarily all things that Aussie has to do, right? These are things that we think, think should happen. And our ask might be to Aussie, we want you to support legislation that does this, right? So they don't necessarily have to do it directly, but we want you to support guidance that would do this or something like that. Um, I think that's where, where we have the most important um, role right now or should be. Yeah. Well, it, so, so, so to me, there's the, there's three elements to it then, right? If we're thinking about breaking down parts of what we were talking about with those other states, and at least what I've been looking at uh, within these literacy plans, right? It's, there's the preparation side for new teachers. There's the professional development for all teachers who teach reading. There's the certification side that I think goes alongside preparation, right? That, um, you know, what, what are we requiring from teachers? And um, I, take, I take that back. I think there's a fourth element too of what, is, what, what and how do the community-based organizations and libraries do to support this, right? Um, and Emily, you see, to your point, right? And, and we, we had uh, earlier and, and, and Fraser about, you know, what happens to the, to the students beyond fourth grade, right? I, I, I was really moved by the model by Reach Incorporated when their executive director came to speak with us of, you know, um, and, and we got to talk after, uh, you know, and he was saying that for a lot of the ninth, 10th, 11th graders who are not reading at, mm -hmm fifth grade level you can't give them a fifth grade book right to to learn because that's just very um it doesn't resonate right and so the best way is not to give them a a, a book that's at great at, at their actual reading level but to give them a fifth grader or a third grader next to them and and sort of turn them into the mentor and they learn together i love that right i, I think that's actually a, a beautiful way to go about doing it those interventions are very one-off in a way. And I don't mean that as that, that they're bad, right? But they're not systematic. They're, they're band-aids that we're, we're currently putting on through these nonprofits that are seeking their own funding rather than structurally integrated into our actual system, right? And so how do we, how do we think about, right? If, if we're thinking about, you know, advising um, as, our, as, our, as, our, as our verb, how Aussie moves forward with this, I, I, I think either we, you know, offer a bit macro level on each of those themes, or we kind of dive into a few of them and, and get into, get into the weeds with it, right? Um, can, I, and, can I interrupt uh, you yeah. for a second, Alistair? Uh, what, how much time do we have? Do we get cut off at six o'clock? Not cut off, but, but that's what our, I think our normal ending time okay, is. Because we, um, we okay, we got 14 minutes left. Um, uh, Alistair, do you mind if I volunteer you and me to put together a plan for the rest of the committee uh, and just get email email that to everybody? Sounds good. Uh, and yep. then we'll and we'll get back. Um, I mean, I see. I'm, I'm the outlier as far as meetings are concerned. I'd like to meet every day just to see everybody, and um, but I know that you all have. Y'all have y'all get paid. I see. I get paid for this. <laughs> Every month I get a check for just sitting in my chair. <laughs> uh, but we got one more thing to talk about. But we'll do that. I'll be in touch with you, Alistair. Oh, let me mention one thing about about reading. Uh, you all know that I collect um, donations and deliver books uh, to the to the ward. But and it's. It's really going well. I put something on Facebook yesterday and on the listservs uh, all over. And, and I've, I've just gotten, you know, a thousand books today. Uh, I've collected a thousand. I've collected a thousand. I haven't distributed them. My, my living room was empty for the first time since uh, a long time. And so I put out this emergency call and everybody. But I know you don't have the time to, that I have to distribute books to the schools in your ward, but it really um, works. Another thing is, is um, there's an organization called My Own, what is it? My Own Library, or it's in Chicago with the University of Chicago. I had a meeting 
with the director last week about, and I'm gonna volunteer all of you to uh, sponsor a school in your ward to get uh, books for your for your students. I'm gonna volunteer you for that. Um, when you say volunteer us, what does that mean? What do we need to do? That means you're gonna be in charge of, of picking a school and being the sponsor for that school to get free books to the students. I pick a school. They're yeah, I'll tell give, you. I'll tell you. They're going to give the books, and the school will get the books. Not uh, uh, right. You don't have to do anything, but yep. you're just a. You're not even a facilitator. You're less than a facilitator, but a. a I just more, I'm, more than yeah. more than. I'm just the person who picks the number. So like the bingo balls, I don't have yeah. to buy the prize. I don't have to set it up. I just need to show up and pick the bingo ball of the school out the thing, and we have a winner. I think That's so. I'll, I'll like. let you know more about okay. it. I don't know. I don't know about it yet. I've only had one meeting. Um, okay. Um, oh, the educational pr preparation program requirements. Uh, you all, did y'all read? I know you didn't read the document. It's about 12 pages, I guess. But it's it's something that Aussie is going to uh, talk to us about at the next meeting, right, John Paul? Ossie's going to talk about the education preparation program on our, our business meeting. They're going to talk about the, the draft regulations, yes. and the sort draft of regulations of it. What the timeline is and, and all that at our um, May Please, work. please take some time, 10, 10 or 15 minutes to read it and write down your questions because I think there are some gaps, some huge gaps in this preparation program, and we need to make them aware of it in a nice way <laughs> because you catch more flies with honey than you do with vinegar. <laughs> Anything else? Gosh, I think we covered a lot of stuff in a short period of time. All right, well, I'm, 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 it's, it's great seeing you. And uh, when we, we're going to meet, should we meet every two weeks or should we meet once a month? The next scheduled meeting is May 11th. I okay, think. so that's that's two weeks. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's great. Is that on a Monday? It's a, it should be a Tuesday. Tuesday, okay. At five o'clock? Mm, four. Four o'clock, it's even better. <laughs> uh, okay, good. Thank you all so much, you look great. Alistair's then had 12 backgrounds behind him today. <laughs> Um, Fraser, if, you, if you've got time now if, and you can stay on, can we just chat while we've got John Paul too for 10? Oh, yeah, uh, 10 let's do that. About what this actually looks like. Yeah, okay. that's fine. That's fine. All right. Thank All you. All right, ladies. Good. We'll see you all. Take Bye. care. Bye.